Minato Namikaze seems to be a fan favorite of every person who watches Naruto, and for good reason. He's basically our first glimpse into what a completed Naruto would have looked like. And that's why Minato's return during the 4th Shinobi World War meant so much. His return was meant to allow us to compare Naruto to the hero we have venerated for so long. We were able to see that they were both one and the same. We even got to learn more about the flying Raijinjutsu, showing that it's so hard to learn that four skilled Jonin personally trained by Minato had to work together just to pull it off once. That set the bar high. Then Naruto pulls up with Minato and they can both do it easy peasy. Minato's return had an impact on both the emotional states of the audience and characters, but also served as the passing on of a torch, the will of fire. That's why the return of Minato had such a deep impact, and why he will always be one of the better characters in Naruto. Not just because he was a badass, but because he was the proper way to set up a hero for greatness. To show the hero a person they could never compare to, give that character drive, and then watch as they work to equal and then surpass that hero. It's beautiful. And now, I would like to begin another story centered around Minato. What would it have been like if Minato were around to train Naruto? Join me for this super video designed to celebrate one of the coolest shinobi of all time. Welcome to the Amagi. Before we begin, only 25% of our viewers are subscribed, so if you're a fan of the video, please like and double check if you're subscribed. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. The air was thick with the smell of soot and blood as it wafted through the air. Minato rushed through the woods and forests all alone. He had to leave his team behind. After all, they had to complete their mission. And given that Kakashi was now an official Jonin, he had what it took to complete that mission on his own and to lead Obito and Rin to victory. Minato so wished that he could be there with them. While he knew that his team was capable, it was hard for him to let them go. After all, it was as if a father were watching his children leave the nest for the first time. The protective side of him wanted to be with them, to watch over them and ensure that no harm could ever befall them. Minato hated the idea of letting them go, but he knew that they were all shinobi, and it wouldn't be healthy for him to hover over them for all time. But at the same time, were they ready? That was the biggest question on his mind. Were they truly ready for this? Minato had no way of really knowing. Tests and drills in Konoha brought forth favorable results, but the real world was different from a test. He knew that they had the tools, but the question was if they could make use of those tools in the real world. Would they remember what they'd been taught, or would fear take over and bring them crashing down? War was unpredictable, and there was no guarantee that anyone would survive. Not even Minato himself. Minato would rush through the smoke and craters left behind by explosions. The dropping of ordnance, having been thrown from mortars and various other forms of weapons, were exploding in the distance. Running up, he found the group of shinobi having been pinned down. One of them, Fugaku Uchiha, was kneeling over the body of an Uchiha, hand in hand. It seemed that a young man had died in the clan head's arms. Fugaku was obviously distraught. All Minato could do was place his hand on his friend's shoulder. Minato and Fugaku had been best friends for years. They met each other in the academy in a bygone era, and a rivalry began between the two of them. Fugaku possessed the Sharingan, which during his time he believed made him a superior shinobi. I can see anything, young Fugaku said. I can react to any attack you send my way, the small black-haired boy said. Minato was a bit of a washout himself in his earlier years. He possessed what some might call ADHD, which meant that he had a harder time paying attention in class than other kids. This left him daydreaming when he should have been learning. And then, when tests came around, he was not equipped with the knowledge to solve them. And it wasn't like he could bring his homework home to anyone for help. Minato lived by himself. He had no parents. Not that he had any bad memory to scar him, he didn't remember his parents. For as long as he lived, he recalled living alone. All he had was the clan name Namakaze. Try as he might, however, he could not discover where his clan name had come from, as there were no clans on record with this name. He even had a DNA test done once to see if perhaps the name was wrong, and his blood did show up as many things, including Senju, but the tests were inconclusive, and being what some might consider a mutt, he possessed blood from a lot of different clans, so what his parents truly were remained a mystery. That being said, Fugaku was always that one kid willing to tutor Minato. It was with Fugaku's help that Minato began to display his full potential. Fugaku taught Minato the importance of focus and paying attention. How to pay attention, what to pay attention to, and by the end of it, what had once been student and tutor quickly became rival versus rival. After Fugaku's declaration that he could react to everything, it was Minato who decided to become the one thing Fugaku couldn't react to. It seemed an impossible task, but Minato was dead set to be the first person to outspeed a Sharingan. 
This led to Minato training his speed to levels that astounded many. Lightning release users were becoming to grow jealous even. That's what led to the Yellow Flash being named perhaps the fastest shinobi in history. His speed surpasses roughly half the speed of light without jutsu. Even still, Minato didn't feel fast enough. If he had been here earlier, maybe Fugaku's friend wouldn't have died. Fugaku looked up at Minato, obviously hiding his tears as per the shinobi code, but his Mongekyo Sharingan told him everything he needed to know. Minato put his hand on Fugaku's shoulder. Stay here, I'll deal with the enemy. Minato would then rise from the trenches and attempt to use his speed and abilities to take out those pinning down the shinobi of Konoha. Minato's speed was something else entirely, but suddenly, out of the blue, something struck him, knocking him to the ground with such force that he made a crater. For a second, Minato laid there, believing that he had somehow not been paying attention and instead had grazed a tree or something, but he raised his eyes and saw someone there. Someone who was not an Iwanin like the shinobi he had been fighting earlier. Nope, this shinobi appeared to be a mercenary and a former member of Kumogakure. At that time, he realized what it was. This shinobi was adept at lightning release, and it appeared as though his speed surpassed even that of the Raikage. This man grew dangerously close to the speed of light. That was thought to be an impossible feat. It would explain why he felt like a sledgehammer. Minato managed to stand. He faced this mercenary who displayed the symbol of a lightning bolt across his eye. Who are you? Minato asked. The man smiled. My name is Kusoku, and I'm the fastest shinobi alive. The two began to fight, struggling against each other. As the battle continued, however, it was becoming obvious to Minato that this man truly was faster than he was in every sense of the word. Like, he caught Minato lacking, it felt like. Minato had calculated his own speed one time and came to the realization that he was about half the speed of light. This man was so quick that Minato was getting hit before he even detected that the man had moved. Even the Sharingan couldn't detect it until after it had happened, and at that point, it was only a slight stationary object after Minato had gone flying. Something slowed down only after striking Minato and sending him back. Minato couldn't defend because he couldn't see anything coming. It was then that he realized that his left eye had been blinded by the strike. Blood poured from the socket as no light could be detected. He let out a cry of pain. It was then that the shinobi, done playing around, brandished his knife. I think I've proved myself enough against the yellow flash. It's time for me to quit playing with my food and collect my bounty. Suddenly, Fugaku stepped in the way and took the blow, his mongekyo active. I see right through you. Minato stood there in horror, watching his friend get stabbed. Pulling him away, he held him in his arms. Fugaku, why? Fugaku looked up at him. Minato, I understand it. I know what he's doing. My Sharingan can't see him, but my mongekyo can. Take my eye and see what he's doing. Fugaku would remove his left Sharingan and give it to Minato, putting it into his head and using the remainder of his chakra to quickly heal the nerve connections together. Fugaku would smile and pass away in his arms. Minato was angered and sorrowful. That anger and sorrow burned into hatred as he looked up at the man before him. Rising to his feet, he prepared to fight. The man laughed. How touching! He's living on inside of you! Well, he won't be living there for long! The man would rush Minato, but this time Minato caught the blade with his own kunai. He realized he was able to see it. He could see with more than just light. He could see chakra. The chakra used to form the jutsu that surpassed the speed of light. But the question was how the man was doing this. How was he going faster than light? He continued to watch the man as he attacked. Even still, this man's ability to attack was reaching a point that even the Mangekyo Sharingan couldn't see. It was only by grace that the man slowed down to attack. It was then that Minato understood. The man was utilizing a form of lightning-style jutsu. What was happening was that the man was increasing his speed as well as lowering his mass. As he approached light speed, his mass decreased until it reached zero. And as his body attempted to accelerate beyond light speed, his mass seemed to count negative. This would also explain how he was able to go so much faster than Minato while expending less chakra. As for something like this, following the theory of a tachyon, it would take more energy to slow down than to speed up in this state. The less mass available, the less energy expended during acceleration, and upon hitting negative mass, the man began actually saving chakra the faster he went. This was an ingenious jutsu, and Minato couldn't help but admire it. But the fatal flaw was that he needed to slow down to be able to attack. Something with zero mass was basically intangible. In other words, it meant that at this speed, it became impossible for the man to actually hit Minato. So he needed to slow down to just below the speed of light and just barely increase his mass into the positive range to even strike Minato at all. And because of this, Minato could catch his attacks. Without Fugaku's help, Minato would have never discovered this. But now, Minato knew the weakness and knew what to expect. He pulled a second kunai and prepared. The man once again attacked, but his kunai was caught and he immediately retreated. Perhaps you can block my attacks, but you can't... 
<laughs> the man began gushing blood from a wound. Minato had anticipated the man's attack and had simply held his kunai up, letting the man's speed do the work for him. Another issue with your technique. Not only do you have to slow down when you attack, but moving faster than light leaves your eyes, which can only perceive light at a lower reaction time, blinded. You leap without looking, and you just leapt onto a knife. I hope your death is as painful as Fugaku's. The shinobi then fell over. Minato looked around and activated his Mongekyo Sharingan, casting black flames everywhere. As blood poured from the eyes, screams echoed across the field as bodies were eaten up by the eternal black flame. Minato was astounded by the power of this eye, but as soon as the battle ended, he found himself feeling weak. Hitting the ground, he felt his power draining and wondered why. One of the Uchiha clan members that was left from Fugaku's squad explained that the Sharingan exacted a heavy toll on those who were not of Uchiha heritage. The drain wasn't quite as bad for Minato as he did have distant Senju blood, but it was still there, and it was getting worse. The Uchiha told him that he also did not have the ability to shut the Sharingan off, and because of that, he couldn't conserve his energy. The only way for him to conserve it was by wearing an eye patch or something, and so they outfitted Minato with an eye patch and let him rest. He would then, after regaining his strength, rush back to his squad, only to find Kakashi fighting alone to protect Rin. Minato seemed to notice that Kakashi had a Sharingan as well, and he could only assume what this meant. As Kakashi reached the end of his rope, Minato swooped into the rescue, eradicating all the shinobi on his own. He would lift Kakashi up and run to Rin. There, he would ask what happened. The girl was crying. She proceeded to tell Minato that Obito had died trying to rescue her. This hit him like a sledgehammer. This news hurt worse than anything Kusoku could do to him. He would carry Kakashi to a safe place away from the battle and let the boy rest. He understood that the Sharingan had drained much of his chakra, and given how many times he'd forced himself to utilize Chidori, it was a miracle he was even still alive. He would cover Kakashi's eye to let it rest and keep guard until the boy woke up. Thankfully, he was young and bounced back quickly. Kakashi lamented the death of his friend. Rin was lamenting in her own way. She was standing off by herself, gazing up at the stars. Minato sat down beside Kakashi. Kakashi was silent for a moment. Minato put his hand on Kakashi's shoulder only to have the boy sweep his hand away. It's okay, you can talk to me, Kakashi. I'm fine, Kakashi said. Minato shook his head. No, you're not fine, now tell me about it. It was my fault. Minato was a little surprised. What do you mean? Kakashi looked back at him. Obito is dead because of me. Kakashi pulled his legs in and buried his face in them. I was so scared of ending up like my old man that I was willing to leave Rin behind when she got captured. Obito left without me and I nearly left him behind too. Then I realized that I had to do something. I rushed back after them and attempted to save them. But because I wasn't paying attention, one of the shinobi gouged my eye. We managed to defeat him as well, but as we were leaving the cave with Rin, it began to collapse. I was struck in the skull by a falling rock because I couldn't see it coming. Obito tried to rescue me and in doing so got himself crushed. Kakashi almost sounded like he was crying now. Obito then gave me his Sharingan to replace my eye, and then he was crushed by the rocks. I tried to save Rin, but even with my Sharingan, I wasn't able to. I needed you. I was trying not to be as bad as my father, and instead, I was worse. Minato rubbed Kakashi's back in a calming way. You know, I had a friend too. A friend who was an Uchiha. I overestimated my abilities and nearly died because of it, but at the last second, my friend threw himself in the way and got himself killed. He then gave me his eye as well. Minato displayed the Sharingan under his eye patch. We're both in the same boat, Kakashi. Neither of us did anything wrong. You tried to come back for them despite your fear. You made a good call and did what a leader is supposed to do. But what you need to realize as a leader is you can't save every teammate. Sometimes people die, and that's not always because of you. Minato looked up to the stars. I know it's not easy to escape the feeling that you could have done something better. That guilt never actually leaves us, but it doesn't change that we gotta keep moving forward. We can't just let our sorrow consume us and die. I loved your father and found him to be a shinobi of higher caliber than even I, but I had one thing against him. He killed himself when he was at his lowest. That's not a way to regain honor. It ensures that you die in dishonor. So as long as we live, there's a chance for us to change, but death, death is final. Honor can be regained. And even if it isn't, I'd rather have a dishonorable man as a friend than an honorable man whose grave I visit often, asking why he didn't stay around. Kakashi nodded. Why did he have to kill himself? I believe he was trying to regain not only his honor, but yours. I believe your father died for you. Kakashi looked up, tears in his eyes. Why couldn't he live for me? Minato wrapped his arms around the boy and pulled him into his embrace. There was nothing he could say. It was the tragedy of suicide. It solved nothing. It didn't get rid of the pain, it merely pushed it onto someone else. Everyone else. And worse still, it multiplied that pain. 
They rested for the night, and the day after, they set out to destroy Conaby Bridge. It was a successful mission. Returning home, the group were allowed to go their own separate ways. Minato watched as Kakashi and Rin went to their homes. Minato wished to do the same, but he couldn't. He had something to do first. He grabbed Obito's personal items and would deliver them to his grandmother. Upon hearing of the death of her grandson, she would almost double over in sorrow. Minato would carry her inside and allow her to sit down before brewing her some tea to calm her nerves. She seemed inconsolable. How will I ever survive in such a big house, alone, was all she said after that. Minato's day was obviously destroyed, and it only got worse when he had to do the same thing for the Uchiha. To tell Makoto and Itachi of their father's death, and to explain how he got Fugaku's Sharingan. He even offered to return it to Makoto and Itachi, but the two refused it, saying that it was such a Fugaku thing to do, and if Fugaku trusted him with that eye, then he should keep it. That being said, Kakashi was also allowed to keep his Sharingan. Despite these happy things, it was all bittersweet with tears. That was just the way it was. Minato would return home to his wife, who would welcome him in. She would give him a kiss, but realize that he obviously wasn't feeling like himself. Minato, are you okay? He would offer a smile. I'm fine. Her eyes grew sterner. No, you're not. His smile began to falter as his eyes overran with tears. She brought him in where he proceeded to weep like a child. It was only here that Kushina came to realize the truth. Obito had died. Together, they thought about how sweet he had been. A true heart of gold, now ripped from them. And with the passing of Fugaku as well, things weren't great. At all. Especially now that the pregnant Makoto had nobody to help raise their soon-to-be two children. She could only imagine the anguish that both she and Itachi would be going through at a moment like this. To his credit, Itachi was being very brave, but even he was faltering and Minato had seen it. Though no tears came out immediately, Minato was able to watch Itachi's heart shatter like glass. Hatred was born in his heart that day, but it wasn't hatred of any particular person. No, it was hatred of war, hatred of hatred itself. Itachi became one of the youngest Uchiha to ever awaken their Mangekyo Sharingan, and that struck Minato hard. Even now, Minato was thinking about it as he cried in Kushina's arms. She stroked his head to try and calm him. It wasn't long after that Kakashi and Rin would be sent on a solo mission. Minato hadn't even been notified until after, but by then it was too late. Kakashi was the only one to return, and when he did, he returned a broken man. His Sharingan had evolved into a Mangekyo as well, and from there, Kakashi began to spiral. It wasn't long after this that Hiruzen would step down as Hokage, and would instead name Minato Hokage. Minato accepted it with humbleness of heart, but he couldn't lie, this had always been his dream. And that night, through joy and love, a miracle entered the world as Kushina and Minato conceived their first child. Minato had learned to cope with the loss. The mechanism he used was to remember everything he had and what life they had saved, the life they had made. It was a beautiful thing, and he attempted to get Kakashi to see it as well. He specifically ordered his student to be Kushina's personal bodyguard during her pregnancy while Minato worked. Most people, Kakashi included, viewed this as an overprotective husband who demanded that his wife and unborn child be guarded only by the most trustworthy shinobi, the one that Minato had trained personally. And Kakashi did, but it did not seem to change his mentality any. He was still sorrowful and mourning the loss of his loved ones. Kakashi was caught in a funk he couldn't escape. For a while, those around Kakashi grew scared that he might attempt to kill himself over this loss, but Minato didn't. He knew that the hatred festering inside of Kakashi was the hatred of death, needless death, the hatred of suicide. Kakashi would never commit suicide of his own volition in a way that did not somehow benefit a mission. He remembered what Minato had told him, how suicide doesn't make the pain go away, it just pushes it off on other people. And the pain Kakashi was feeling right now, he would hate himself forever if he pushed it off on his friends. Then again, without Rin and Obito, did he even have friends? Yes. Yes, he did. He had Minato, Kushina, and various others. He couldn't just throw in the towel, and that's why he wouldn't. He continued to work for the Anbu, and not long after, Donzo even recruited Itachi. Minato knew Itachi was too young, and he would talk to Donzo about it. He's too young, Donzo, Minato would say as he sat at his desk. I understand, Lord Forth, but I hardly see how it matters. He's two years too young, Donzo, Minato said. Donzo couldn't argue that. It was true, but it's not like he didn't try. Technically, it's one year and a few months. Are we going to start counting days now? 500 days? Donzo took a deep breath to remain calm. Lord Minato, I understand what you mean, but this is important. The boy is already one of the strongest shinobi in the village. This is a once-in-a-lifetime prodigy we're talking about. And coming from myself, I can tell you just how short a life feels. Time is a limited thing. 
and a person can only be in the Anbu for so long before their mind and body give way to old age. So you're going to be recruiting Shinobi under the standard age. He's a child. He's seen more than most children, Donzo snapped. He's already awakened his Mongekyo Sharingan. He understands pain and loss. I understand what you mean, Lord Minato. I really do. But trust me, this is a good idea. And it's not like I'm going to be sending him on the most dangerous missions out there. No, I'm going to be conditioning him and training him to fit the part. I might send him on small missions that aren't that dangerous. I just want him to acclimate to the role, so when he's actually old enough, we can skip the training and get straight into business. This child could go on to be the strongest shinobi Konoha has ever known, and I for one don't want to waste his potential. What about his childhood, Minato asked. He lost his childhood a long time ago, Lord Forth. He has already lost his father and taken on that role in the house for his younger brother. And what does Makoto think of this, Minato asked. She's agreed because Itachi's agreed. Itachi basically begged her to let him, saying that he needed to prove himself, that he could make enough money to care for her and Sasuke. He obviously wants it, Lord Forth. Why not give it to him? Honor Fugaku's memory by not holding back his son. I'm trying to protect his son, Donzo. Protect him from what? A proper future. Minato sat there and thought about it for a moment. Has he decided to do this? Donzo nodded. Fine, I'll allow it, but only on a trial basis. You train him, nothing at a village. Donzo nodded. It was better than nothing. As Donzo left, Minato turned around in his chair and looked out the window over the village. Fugaku, I really wish you were here right now. I could really use your help. Time continued to pass and Kushina was beginning to reach her full term. As she grew closer to the time of the birth of their first child, Minato and the council would convene. The council would first congratulate Minato on the closeness of the birth of his firstborn son, but they would move on to state that while it is important to ensure that she gets the best treatment, she would also need to be located in a place where nobody could find her, and a place that she could cause relatively little damage should the Ninetales escape during the pregnancy. Donzo would suggest a secret underground base that the Anbu used to store their important documents, though it had recently fallen into disrepair. He would take Minato out and show him. It's fairly low tech compared to what we have in the modern era, but that doesn't make it insecure. It could be easily used to house a VIP, and given the nature of the labyrinth of hallways that lead to nowhere, and the amount of Anbu we can store at every station, it's one of the more secure safe houses in all of Konoha. We could further outfit it with its own ceiling circle to bolster the likelihood that Kushina can hold it in. We'll also need a ceiling squad on location, just in case. I can actually do that, Minato said. She's my wife, and I want to be there when she gives birth to our son. Donzo would nod. I'll allow it. Hirazen would then speak up. My wife, Biwako, is a skilled medical nin. One of the best, only surpassed by Tsunade herself. I'm certain she would love to help deliver the baby, Minato. Minato smiled. Thank you, Lord Hirazen. It would be an honor. And with that, the meeting was adjourned. Minato would then get to spend some time with his wife, helping her get the baby's room ready. Over the next few weeks, that's all they were really doing. He recalled telling Kushina jokes over dinner one night. As he did, she looked down at the floor. Minato, my water just broke. Minato stood. What? What does it mean? Minato asked in a bit of a panic. It means I'm about to go into labor. The baby's coming. Baby? Minato questioned. Is it already here? She shook her head. Calm down, Minato. It's not here yet, but it'll be coming soon. I think I'm about to throw up, Minato said as he gave off a dry heave. Minato, I love you, baby, but you better get your crap together because you're the seal man. If you don't enforce this seal, everyone's gonna die. So please, get off your ass and muscle up. Minato nodded. Not long after, the Anbu showed up to escort them to their designated location. Once they were there, one of the Anbu captains started barking orders to the others to fan out and protect the cave under by all costs. He then met up with the expecting couple. Lady Kushina, it's wonderful to meet you. You can call me Captain Tenma. I look forward to being the head of your security detail tonight. And welcome, Lord... F uh, is it just the moonlight, or does he seem pale? Kushina looked back at Minato, and then to the Anbu. It's not the moon. This is his first child, and he's a bit nervous. Captain Tenma laughed. I remember my first one. I totally understand. The agent then took out a lantern and began to lead them in through the labyrinth of halls. Miss Biwako has already arrived. She and a few other hand-picked nurses are scrubbing up as we speak. He would then lead her into a room. It was pretty barren. She saw the stone slab sitting there in the center of the room. It was then that Biwako appeared. Ah, Kushina, you're here. Biwa, Kushina called out as if greeting an old friend. And indeed she was. Biwako was one of the women she enjoyed spending time with the most. She, Biwako, and Makoto often went out shopping together for groceries. It was one of the bright spots of her week. Come in, Kushina dear. You're free to change over there behind the partition, dear. I'll have the nurses help you. Thank you, Kushina said as she walked over to the partition. 
Are you ready, Minato? You look a little pale. Minato nodded. Biwako then looked up at him with a cutting glare that would kill a lesser man. You had better be. The life of your wife and child are at stake. If you fail here, everyone in the village, including your wife and child, will die. Am I clear? Minato swallowed. Yes, ma'am. Kushina then returned. Biwako's smile returned as well. Alrighty, dear. Just lay down on the table. I know it looks painful, but trust me, it's better this way. One of the nurses would lift Kushina's shirt to expose her stomach. The nurse then made the seal visible with a quick infusion of chakra and then pointed to the center, telling Minato what to do. Be certain to keep a steady flow of chakra going in. You don't really have to do much unless the seal changes. And whatever you do, I know it can be easy to forget, but remember not to push on the seal. Why? Will the Ninetales get out? The nurse seemed nervous. Minato was so out of his head with fear right now that he was missing even the obvious stuff. N no, no. It's just not a good idea to press on a woman's belly while they're giving birth. The nurse turned away and whispered into Biwako's ear. Minato heard Biwako uttering a prayer over this. God help us. Biwako would take a deep breath. We're going to start administering the medication now to induce labor. We don't have all night to wait. Security here will only last so long, so let's get started. Minato seemed nervous. Kushina reached out and grabbed Minato's hand. She kissed it as she looked up at him. Minato, don't worry. It'll all be fine. Minato looked down. What if I fail? What if I can't keep the seal whole? Kushina choked out a giggle. Minato, I've taught you plenty. You know what you're doing. All you need to do is focus on that seal. Just apply chakra in a swirling pattern, like the drain of a bathtub, okay? And if the Ninetales starts to talk to you, ignore him. He has no power at all, and everything will be fine, even if he threatens you. I promise, he can't do anything. Kushina was technically lying. The Ninetales could do something. This is why she added a secondary seal based on the strength of a hundred seal that would add extra chakra to the seal in Minato's stead just in case it was too much for him to handle. Just do like we practiced, she said. Her eyes sparkled with hope and love as she looked at him. I love you, Minato. I trust you. I believe in your ability to do it. Minato offered a small smile. Kushina always knew how to calm him down. She was so beautiful, but the beauty within her heart shined through in ways that even the physical realm could not live up to. From the start of their relationship, she always made him feel loved. When he was scared, she was there for him. When he trembled with anxiety, she was there for him. As it felt like the walls were closing in and the world was growing too dark, she was there. Every time he scared himself with his own dark side, every time he cried, every time he questioned himself, she was there. She brought him a sense of peace that carried him through his darkest times, and now he was unable to live without her. He wondered what he could have possibly done to deserve someone as kind, loving, and beautiful as she. The man he was now only existed because she nurtured it. The man he had become. He had become in response to her needs and what he believed she deserved. She caused him to better himself, to grow stronger, wiser, and more dependable. She had been his coach and their relationship his training. And now, this moment was the end result. Everything they'd been preparing for. A new love to enter the world. And now Minato was swallowing his fear and terror. It was time to become that man again. The one he had trained to be. She was always his rock when he needed her. Now it was time for him to be the rock. With a face full of determination, Minato proceeded to focus on the seal. Waiting patiently for her to switch over control to him. Time would pass and her contractions would begin to grow closer together. It's 11. Time to push, Kushina, Biwako said. Push! Kushina took a deep breath and began to push, first giving off a muffled groan and then a cry. Don't forget to breathe, Kushina, Biwako coached. Keep her breathing, Minato. I'm trying to keep the damn fox in. I can't concentrate on both. Biwako glared at him. Lord Forth, if you don't keep her breathing, I swear to God I'm going to come over there and knock you on your ass. Minato huffed at her and then looked at Kushina. He tried to keep calm. Ku, baby, I need you to keep breathing. Remember those exercises. Kushina nodded. Kushina began to follow the exercises as she had been taught. She then continued pushing. Good, Kushina, good, keep it up, Biwako cheered. All the while, Minato was fighting his own battle. He was putting a steady bit of chakra into it, but he hadn't expected the force of this. None of them had, it seemed. The Nine Tails was hitting him with the force of a hurricane. The cage where the Nine Tails was imprisoned was rattling, shaking violently. It was pulling free from its seal. It was pulling its hands off the spikes holding it pinned to the rock. Once its hands were free, it began to pull the pillar piercing its belly. As it did so, Minato saw the spiral pattern on Kushina's stomach beginning to open. The seal on the nine tails was beginning to come undone. Oh, hell. Minato began reinforcing the seal, but this wasn't what he expected it to be. He wasn't sure he could hold it like this. 
Minato would then enter into the mind space where Kushina and the Ninetales' internal selves were. Kushina was sitting off to the side in a meditative state, her face twisted. She was focusing so hard on giving birth that she didn't even notice that Minato was there. The Ninetales, however, noticed and laughed at him. Minato, the beast said, drawing out the name as if he were surprised or bemused by his presence. I won't let you out, Ninetales. The beast began to laugh. As if you have any choice in the matter. It finished pulling the final spike from its stomach. It fell to the ground where it threw the pillar at Minato. Minato just barely dodged to the right. He knew he wasn't completely at full strength here. After all, he was still attempting to use the most of his chakra to keep the seal closed, to at least keep the Ninetales in this mindscape. Fool, I will kill Kushina, and I'll kill the infant. I will get out, and when I do, I'll kill you as well. Minato felt a panic in his chest, like a cold release in his ribcage. Minato raised the kunai that bore the mark of the flying raijin on the handle. He tried to remember what Kushina said. You can't actually hurt them. You're here, inside the mindscape. You're not physical. The Nine Tails laughed. You're a fool. What is the body but a vessel for the non-physical? All I need to do is eat her soul. If I kill her here, I kill her in reality. Minato's heart skipped a beat. He looked back at her and realized that maybe he was correct. I won't let you, Minato declared. Then try and stop me. The Nine Tails began to make its way toward her. Minato would call upon as much chakra as he could to make a big ball Rasengan, even going into sage mode to manage it. He would jump into the air and smash it down on the back of Kurama. Minato would then begin to weave hand signs. Suddenly, red Tori gates began to fall from the sky. Kurama, in his rage, however, knocked a few away with his tail before getting caught by one. He tries to push against it and in his rage manages to dislodge it. Kurama would rise up and then turn on Minato. I will devour you! Kurama would claw out at Minato, but Minato utilizes pure speed to get out of the way. He throws a kunai up at Kurama that gets wedged in his nose. In anger, Kurama attempts to smash Minato with his tails. Minato would utilize the flying raijin to get to Kurama's nose and climb up on his snout. He pulled the kunai out and ran straight at Kurama's eyes, attempting to pierce them with his blade. Kurama would scoff and slap down at his snout, crushing Minato. Kurama would raise his hand and see only a log. Huh? Suddenly, Minato came down from above, drawing the Ninetales' attention. Kurama looks up and sees Minato coming. Minato falls down on Kurama's open eye and proceeds to stab it with his kunai. Kurama would let out a roar before he began closing his eyelids to crush Minato. His claws swipe at the tiny Hokage to knock him loose, throwing him at the floor. Blood drips from between the eyelids as Kurama curses Minato. Damn your eyes, Hokage. For that, nothing will stop me from taking the only thing you love. Kurama breaks out into a full sprint toward Kushina. Minato attempts another Rasengan, but Kurama, in his wrath, tanks the shot and keeps going. Minato would suddenly teleport to Kushina's side as Kurama comes in. He personally grabs the claw and holds it back. It's only inches from Kushina's chest. K Kushina! I need help! He feels his power waning. He draws more for himself that he was putting into the seal. Suddenly, the glowing mark on the ceiling begins to open a bit more, much to Kurama's delight. Minato was falling for the bait. Suddenly, there's the sound of a click, like a mechanism unlocking. The room is filled with chakra. It was the seal Kushina had set earlier. It forced the seal to close and then flooded Minato with chakra. Minato felt her chakra giving him strength. He would push the nine tails back. Kurama was shocked that something so small had the strength to resist him, let alone drive him back. He growled as he pushed against it, but was going nowhere. Minato managed to lift Kurama up and throw him. As the beast was flung, he hit the ground hard. Minato felt Kushina's chakra flowing through him. He wasn't sure how or why, but he did. He decided to make use of it. He weaved hand signs together. Suddenly, adamantine chains fired from his back and rushed to Kurama. They wrapped around him. They lifted the beast up as it roared and slammed Kurama to the stone where he'd been sealed before. Minato would take the spikes and once more replace them. He would drive them through Kurama's hands and feet, as well as one through every tail before lifting the biggest of all and driving it into his stomach, thereby locking him down. Minato would then weave hand signs and allow the chains to wrap around the stone and around Kurama, holding him down. With that, Minato took a quick breather. He turned around and walked to Kushina. He knelt down beside her and kissed her before returning to his own body. The seal had closed up. Minato finally opened his eyes as he realized the battle was over. The first thing he heard was Kushina take three deep breaths before crying out loudly. Suddenly, there was a second cry that wasn't Kushina as she lay her head back. It's a boy, Biwako said. Cutting the cord, she swaddled the babe and carried it over to its mother. Minato wished to hold Naruto, but Biwako pulled him back. The mother gets to see him first. 
Minato wished in this moment that he had a fairly sizable rock in his hand with which to bust Biwako's coconut with, but he took a deep breath and calmed down. She had just delivered Naruto. It was a safe birth because of Biwako. Minato came over to see the new baby laying on his wife's chest. Tears ran down Kushina's face as she could hardly believe what she was looking at. Look, Minato, look! Our baby! She had all but forgotten the pain from a second ago, and perhaps that was for the best. Kushina and Minato got their first cuddle session with Naruto, which reminded Minato of why he fought. But suddenly Minato heard a thump. He stood back up and turned around and made his way to the end of the altar where he found Biwako and the other nurses laying dead in a pool of blood. Minato's heart froze in that moment. He had only been kidding about wanting her dead. He turned around and saw Kushina reaching out. No, Naruto! Minato saw a strange masked figure holding Naruto. He quickly removed his eye patch and threw it to the side. His Mongekyo Sharingan activated as he stood there watching. Let Naruto go, he shouted. The man laughed. And lose my leverage. I think not. Minato took a step toward the man. Suddenly, the man displayed a kunai in his hand. Now hold your horses there, ninja boy. Another step and this little baby begins its career as a professional pincushion. Minato took a step back. No, please. I beg you. Anything you want. Just don't harm my child. The man thinks about it. Hmm. How about a life for a life? Of course, Minato said. I'll be happy to go with you. Just let Naruto go. Don't be stupid, the man said. Why would I want you? For ransom? You think I'm a petty criminal? Don't be absurd. He pointed his kunai at Kushina. I want her. Her? Minato asked. Why? There's only one reason why, dear Hokage. I want her tailed beast. Minato realized what he wanted. He was terrified. I, I can't do that. The masked man clicked his tongue. Okay then, I guess I'll just kill the baby. No biggie. Not like you two can't make another one. The man throws Naruto up into the air and prepares to stab him. Minato suddenly rushes into action. He manages to jump and grab Naruto. As he came down, he looked back to find that the masked man and Kushina were both gone. How did he escape so fast? Suddenly, Minato realized that Naruto's swaddling clothes were covered in explosive tags. Minato quickly disposed of the swaddling and would utilize the flying Raijin to get out. He would teleport to their home where he would hold the child for a moment. He almost wanted to cry. He held him in his arms and then began to vigorously check the tiny infant for any sign of wounds. Content that the baby was healthy, Minato let out a sigh of relief and a smile, a set of tears dripping down his cheeks. He then remembered that Kushina was the true target the whole time, and that he needed to hurry before this man took the beast from her. He would walk over to the bed and lay the newborn down into it before covering him with a blanket. Rest, Naruto. When next you wake, your mother will be home beside you. He would grab his Hokage's haori that he had sitting there along with the hat that bore the kanji for fire on it, putting it on his head. He would then step outside to hear a roar. An unmistakable roar. The roar of the Ninetales. But before he could do anything, the masked man appeared once again. What's your deal? Minato asked. My deal is a desire for justice in an unjust world. What the hell does that mean? Minato demanded. The man scoffed. I didn't expect you to understand. A chain would lower from below him. The man would then rush in at Minato. Minato would rush in as well, only to pass right through the man to his surprise. He'd then be caught with the chain. How pitiful. As Hokage, are you not supposed to be the strongest shinobi in the village? If this is the best Konoha has to offer, then it won't last much longer in the world to come. Minato would throw a marked kunai from his waist as suddenly the masked man began pulling the chains, intent to pull Minato apart. Minato would suddenly teleport away from the man. The chains went slack. The masked man turned around, smiling with his only visible eye. It seems you still know a few tricks, but you know what they say about old dogs. Minato was confused. You must be very young if you think a man in his mid-twenties is old. The man began to circle around him. Minato analyzed the data he had taken in with his Mongekyo Sharingan. He went intangible when I struck out at him, Minato said to himself. But he doesn't seem to be intangible now, nor can he be when he attacks me, as he did with the chain. Maybe I can use that to my advantage, outspeed his reaction time. Minato looked and saw that the man possessed a Sharingan like him. He possesses the Sharingan. That means his reaction time is through the roof. For me to beat that, I better be fast. Minato then began to rush the man again. Fool. Trying a second time. Perhaps you didn't understand what happened the first time. You're unworthy of that borrowed Sharingan. Minato would throw a kunai at the man's head only for the man to phase. Minato would then use the flying Raijin Jutsu to teleport behind him just before they touched and would strike down with Rasengan right into the man's back. This created a large crater. Minato jumped up from the crater. Not long after, the man jumped out of it as well and stood there for a moment, cursing Minato's name. The man's right arm fell off, as if made from some form of gelatinous substance other than flesh. 
I have to admit, you're as good as I... Suddenly, Minato appeared before him and placed a kunai in the man's stomach. I hope your organs spill out. I hope the infection you get is very painful. I hope it lasts a very long time. Minato then pulled his kunai from the man's stomach. With that, the man teleported away. Minato would then use the flying Raijin to get to Kushina where he'd cut her free. She was pale and cold to the touch. M Minato. His heart began to race seeing her like this. He would utilize the flying Raijin Jutsu to teleport her back to their home. There he would lay her down in the bed beside Naruto. M Minato, the, the Nine Tails, it g got out. Minato nodded. I know. I'm going to go get it and bring it back here. Then we can put it back into you. You'll be okay. Just hang in there for a second, alright? He would then turn around and teleport out. He would teleport to the top of his own head on the Hokage Monument. He would look out over the village and see Kurama standing there, wreaking havoc. It would turn around and see him. It would smile. Did I not promise to kill that which you love, Minato? Minato began to snarl. Kurama's face returned to an angry glare. I believe I promised to kill you as well. Minato would jump down from the building and would begin rushing at Kurama as Kurama would rush toward him, smashing buildings and leveling streets along the way. Minato would run up the side of a building, jump to a tower, and run up it as well until he reached the top. There, he saw Kurama making his way closer. He jumped out at the beast, who would then go to knock him out of the air. Minato would use substitution jutsu to avoid the shot, where he'd appear on the ground and attempt to run up Kurama's arm. Kurama would attempt to smash him from his arm, but Minato would throw a kunai to Kurama's shoulder and would teleport up to it via the flying raijin jutsu to escape the smashes. He would then climb to the top of his shoulder and throw another kunai up at the fox's massive ears. He would teleport to the ear and grab his kunai before jumping down onto the creature's snout. There, he would attempt to cast Genjutsu, but before he could, a hand grabbed him. Minato was caught in the beast's claw. He struggled as it began to squeeze him tighter. He would suddenly teleport down to street level toward the kunai he had left there for good measure. He would try to catch his breath for a second, but Kurama wouldn't even give him that. The nine-tailed fox attempted to smash him once again. Minato would dodge. Activating sage mode, he would summon a plethora of shadow clones. Each one attempted to attack in a different way, though at least three of them attempted to humble the beast with a trio of big ball Rasengans. The real Minato began to crawl up one of Kurama's tails, making his way to the back of the beast's head. While it was preoccupied, he jumped atop its head and activated his Mangekyo Sharingan. He then jumped down on top of its snout where it made eye contact with him. Minato cast a Genjutsu upon the beast, pacifying it. The whole thing was now under Minato's control. He would then de-summon his remaining shadow clones before teleporting the beast back to his home. Once there, he crawled down the beast again and ran in to get Kushina. He brought her out. The whole time, she was holding Naruto. All right, give me Naruto, he said. I'll lay him to the side for a moment. For now, I need you by yourself so I can seal the beast into you. She shook her head. No, Minato. What? he asked. You can hold him again in a moment. She shook her head and coughed. Minato, it's too late. I'm too far gone. If you seal it into me now, it'll die alongside me. Minato shook his head. No, don't talk that way. You'll be fine. Kushina smiled and rubbed her hand across his cheek. Minato, you already know it's true. Tears began to flow down his cheeks as his reassuring smile became a face of utter torment. Why? Why did you have to die? Was I not quick enough? She shook her head. No, baby, that's not it. This is just the fate of a Jinchuriki who loses their tailed beast. Minato continued to cry. Kushina tried to wipe his tears. The beast must be sealed somewhere else. Minato looks back at Naruto. I understand. I'll seal it into Naruto using the Reaper Death Seal. Kushina shakes her head again. No, Minato, you don't have to do it. I do, Minato said as he laid her down. No, Minato, I mean you don't have to throw your life away, she says as she manages to sit up. What was it that you told Kakashi? Killing yourself only pushes your pain onto others. Think about Naruto. Do you want him to suffer as an orphan? Minato looked back at his son. As a Jinchuriki, no less, Kushina continued. He would be alone and full of hate, and he would have no love to help him control it. He needs one of us, Minato, and it can't be me. She somehow managed to stand. So please, allow me to be the one who performs the seal, and let me split its power between you so you both can handle the power. Minato nods. He feels as if he can't stop her from doing this. Kushina stands and begins to do the hand signs. She then completes the summoning ritual with a clap of her hands. The Shinigami appears. It reaches out and grips Kurama's chakra, proceeding to pull it from its body and stuffing it into the bodies of both Minato and Naruto. As this happens, Minato feels it. He hears a roar within his own soul, and incredible hatred and rage, as if he had just had a malevolent witch's curse placed upon him. And as soon as that was over, it was quiet. He reached for his head. He shook it for a moment. He looked up at Kushina to see her stumble on her feet. She then fell backward. 
Minato rushed to her, the sound of Naruto crying in the background. He lifted her up in his arms. Take care of him. She fell limp in Minato's arms. He held her there for a moment, in pure shock. His mind couldn't comprehend what was happening. He took a second to try and remember how he even got here to make sense of it. As the evening had begun, he and she were giggling at jokes and eating supper, and now they were here. How did it happen? As he thought on these things, he looked down and saw Kushina's body in his arms. His breathing intensified as he realized what this was. Terror overtook him, and he shook and trembled as if this were the beginnings of a panic attack. He pulled her into his embrace, hoping that a trace of her was left behind to calm his heart, and when there wasn't, he broke down. Lifting his face to the heavens, he cried out. He wasn't the only one crying tonight. A lot of people in Konoha were. Many were weeping over the loss of their loved ones. Somewhere, Iruka Umino was crying over his parents, as were so many other parentless children, as were so many childless parents. Death was all around, blowing through the cold like an icy wind. Soon, Hiruzen showed up. He walked through the forest to the little cottage where he knew Minato would have gone and saw the unswaddled baby, laying face up in the dirt, crying. Such a painful and hard welcome to the world. Looking at the newly placed seal on his stomach, he knew. He looked behind him at one of the shinobi there and demanded that they take care of it for a moment. He then stepped over to Minato, who was crying inconsolably. He almost sounded like Naruto at this moment, simply a larger version of the infant. Minato! Minato! Hiruzen cried out. Slowly, the man looked up to him, a look of total emotional defeat on his face. She... she, she died! He cried up at him. What am I going to do? Hiruzen felt his own heart breaking. He knew that Biwako must be dead as well. She was at ground zero, and obviously wasn't here either. Hiruzen's own heart was broken, but seeing one so young, one he saw as his successor, like a grandson, experience the same thing at the same time, and unable to contain the raw, unfiltered sorrow caused him to want to cry as well. He hugged Minato. I'm sorry, Minato. Konoha General Hospital was overflowing with the wounded, overflowing with the dead. There was hardly place to put anyone anymore. The halls were littered with cots and stacked blankets, pillows, the sounds of people screaming in agony, the sounds of people crying over a loved one that had passed a moment earlier. The entire village had gone from one happy night to a terrible upheaval in but a few short hours. This had to be one of the most terrible events to transpire in Konoha's borders since its foundation, and Minato was at the center of it. He could only sit in the NICU with Naruto. Naruto is sleeping peacefully now. He had all but forgotten the trauma they experienced only a few short hours earlier. How lucky, Minato thought. How lucky to simply forget everything. Minato couldn't forget. The pain would remain forever. But then again, as sad as he was, he had lost his wife and his world had come to an end. But forgetting about her was forgetting the good times too. And he would rather die than forget those. As Minato sat there, Hiruzen came into the room. I know you're attempting to cope, but the council needs to know. What happened to the Ninetales? Minato looked up at Hiruzen. Can I not get even a single day to grieve? Why do you ask this of me? Hiruzen looked down. The council is asking. Minato sighed. Kushina split its formidable power in two. Half of it was sealed into Naruto, and I possess the other half. So if you're asking if we're without a deterrent, we're not. Ku made certain of that. Hiruzen nodded. He then reached out to put his hand on Minato's knee, but Minato pulled away, crossing it over his other as he looked away from Hiruzen. Minato, you're not the only one to lose something tonight. Minato looked back. You're right. The whole damn village lost someone. And why did that happen? Hiruzen was shocked at this outburst. Do you know what happened in the delivery room? Supposedly the most secure room in all the Land of Fire? Someone broke in, and the Anbu were nowhere to be found. Explain to me why when our lives were in danger, the only person there to save them was me. How did the guy even get into the room in the first place? Hiruzen shook his head. Uh, I don't know. Minato sat back. Tell that bastard Donzo that he's fired. Fired? Hiruzen questioned. Minato looked back. Fired. Fired from what? Minato looked back with surprise as if he had to spell this out. From everything. No more root. No more Anbu. No more council. Nothing. I trusted him with my wife and child. The whole village trusted him with their lives. Look at what happened. He's fired. And tell him I'd better never see his face in Konoha again. Hiruzen sat there, stunned for a while. He then got up and left. Truth be known, Minato was probably just blowing smoke. Perhaps being slightly unfair, but the truth of the matter was it was Donzo's job to keep Konoha safe from harm, and he had failed. Minato turned around and decided to gaze at his son as he slept. The little baby seemed so peaceful. He possessed Minato's hair, but he had his mother's nose. He saw both himself and Kushina in this child. And now, 
Now he was the last thing Minato had left of her. He would put his finger up next to Naruto's as the baby slept and could only smile when Naruto's little hand reached out and grabbed it. What a grip indeed. He had his mother's strength. He would then stand up and kiss the baby's head. Leaving the room, he passed through the halls of agony. The people screaming after being wounded, screaming after someone else wounded passed on. There were so many bodies that the morgue had overflowed. The excess dead were put wherever they could go, and for now, they were piling them up in the supply closets and marking them with numbers to help remember where all the identified corpses went. Kushina was not in one of those closets. She was in a locker in the morgue. It seemed it paid to be Hokage. You got special privileges. Minato made it to the lowest level where he walked into the room. Minato looked at the chart to determine where Kushina was stored. He found the proper locker and opened it up, sliding her out. Her eyes and mouth were closed, unlike the last time he had seen her. He reached down and gripped her hand. She was well and truly dead, and he was alone again. Kissing the hand, he spoke. Kushina, I love you so much. I don't want you to worry. Naruto will be fine. I'll protect him. I won't let him lose control over his tailed beast, I promise. As soon as I figure out how to control it myself, I'll train him too as well. Rest easy. I love you. And that's where I'm thinking about calling it quits for now. Well, y'all wanted a long video, so I gave you a super mega titanic one, and it was one of my favorites so far. It's amazing how much you can change with a simple act. I felt as if I had told this story too much, so I decided to add in the Sharingan as well just to give things a little extra kick. I hope you all enjoyed it. I think it gave more depth to the characters. Before you ask, yes, we are definitely going to make a follow-up video to this one. Whether it's as long or not really depends, but this one will see a conclusion eventually. So stay tuned. Be sure to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to be notified when the next video in this awesome series drops. And just to tide you over, here's a few videos that I think you'll enjoy. Until next time, peace.